I love New York, fond and burnt you be. Lives a guy creating talk. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm George Fennell. Hey. Welcome to BA TV, Billerica Access Television. Now, what you're going to see is a recreation of an old radio show that may go back in the 30s or the 40s. Who knows? It's called The Lone Ranger. Of course, it also became a TV show, a very famous TV show. The script is original. It was taken offline, word for word, so nothing has been changed. Some of our actors have decided to wear a bit of uh, costumes. Of course, in the radio days, nobody wore costumes for it because, well, they might have had an audience, but it was mostly for the ears. Early on in the radio, you could lay down in bed or sit in a, a comfortable chair, close your eyes, and you would have to imagine the room, the person walking in, hearing the door slam, uh, hearing a gunshot. You would have to imagine what everybody looked like. Television, they show you everything. You don't have to close your eyes and imagine anything. But this is a little different. We have sound effects for our show tonight. And over here, there's the sound of uh, thunder. Do you want to try that? That's Ted Clark, who's handling the physical how about a little bit with the uh, horse's hoofs? The coconuts to give you an idea of what, what. And then we have the technical side of it, and that's a bar suite who can give you the horse. Uh, there you go. So that will be a part of it too. Now, um, Chris Clark, who's our director and producer, has a bunch of signs here, and this will draw you into the shows. So we need some of you to help us out with some sound effects. At times, there's a crowd noise, so the best thing to do is to say apples and oranges, peas and carrots, apples and oranges, peas and carrots. And it sounds like conversation between them. Uh, so why don't you show them a couple All of right. sounds? We, we do have a few that do set the moment. Like here, we have reacting. Mm -hmm. uh, the members are <laughs> looking. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, very good. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, golly. They're looking at the height of the water as it rises, oh. so you guys need to give me like a, do you guys? Yeah, like, oh, the water's so high, stuff like that. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Okay, all right. There we go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> all right. Jinky. Next. Jinky. Jinky. Next, we have one where they're suspicious about the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, gosh. 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 Oh, Next, we have shouting. Uh, they're trying to remove the people from the town before it floods. So it's hurry over here. Let's go. Yeah, oh, right. oh, 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 Someone tell the Gannon family they have to be proud of this. Thank you. That in this last one right here is a maze. Uh, as you can see, I uh, spelt it wrong. I forgot to put the D because I ran out of space. Anyway, <laughs> this a maze, uh, he just finished saving, a, uh, saving an old Mexican man on a bridge, and he makes it across right before it bursts and breaks through. So. <gasps> oh, he did that! He did it! Alright, excellent. You're in a maze. Good. So, are you guys ready to start? Yeah. Good luck. Break legs. Break legs. Break all your legs. My nephew said that to me once. Make me break a leg. Break a leg. Break it. Break the leg for Alright. You guys all set? Specific anyway. Alright. speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can you find a greater champion of justice 
Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. hi -o, Silver! Away! Several miles inland from Eagle Pass, Texas, Dr. Frank Rockford approaches a small farmhouse in the foothills. Ho! Oh, ho there, ho! Easy. He stood there a moment, waiting as his 10-year-old daughter, Sally, ran to meet him. Hello, Daddy. Uh, hi. Did you bring me something from town? Uh, uh no, Sally, not this time. Aww. Maybe next time, honey. You run along and play. I, I have to talk to your mother. Frank, I didn't expect you back from Milton so soon. I didn't stay, Mary. I, I don't know how long I'll be able to go on like this. I know how you must feel, dear, but sometimes I wonder if running away was the right thing to do. No one in this territory knows I'm a doctor. They think of me as a small farmer. By now, they must know I'm not a very good farmer from the little I managed to make. I, I saw a handbill in front of the marshal's office this morning and said, wanted on suspicion of murder, Dr. Rockford. <gasps> Clean shaven, medium height, blue eyes. But no one would recognize you with that heavy beard and with a different name. Perhaps not. But it was a shock reading that handbill. And even though we've convinced Sally our name is now Frankford and that I'm a farmer, I'm I'm always afraid she may run into somebody and make a slip. Frank, we know you didn't kill anyone. The facts were against me, Mary. I couldn't stay in Kansas City and face a trial. Uh, I almost wish you had, Frank. We can raise enough here to feed us, but our savings are gone and we'll not be able to meet the payments on the farm. I know how worried you are, but maybe if you gave yourself up. No! No, I, I can't do it. I, I'll manage somehow, as long as you stick by me. I, I'll go work in the field. That afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, headed south toward Eagle Pass and the Rio Grande. As they approached the entrance to the doctor's farm, Tonto pointed and spoke. Mm, look at this, Abby. Little girl near trail. There's a small dog on ground. The dog seems to be hurt. We'll stop a moment. Well, hello there, little girl. What's the matter with your dog? Golly, a masked man! Oh, don't be afraid. Is your dog hurt? No, I'm plain doctor. But Rags will lie still. All right, Rags. You can get up now. Oh. Where did you get that doctor's bag? That's not a toy. Oh, no, it's real. I found it in Daddy's closet. May I look at it? Sure, here. Thanks. Is your father a doctor? He's a farmer. He told me so. What's your name, little girl? Sally Frankford. Well, there's a card glued inside the bag. Dr. Frank Rockford. The doctor must have left this with your father. I don't know. I found it in the closet. Well, I'm sure your father wouldn't want you to use these instruments, Sally. Perhaps you better take the bag back and put it where you found it. Here. All right, mister. Is he a wild Indian? <laughs> no, me plenty tame, Sally. Tonto is my friend, Sally. Do you always wear a mask? Well, most of the time, but never mind the mask. Take the bag back before your father misses it. All right. Come on, Rex. <laughs> Goodbye. It's strange that a farmer would have a doctor's kid in the house, Tonto. Mmm, he was happy. All right, let's go. I want to reach Eagle Pass by sundown. Come on, Silver! In the month's scope. By the time the masked man and Indian reached the outskirts of Eagle Pass and stopped to make camp, a steady wave was falling. Whoa, Silver! Whoa! Whoa, Scout! We'll build a lean-to, Tonto, for shelter. Mm, rain heated plenty much. It's been dry a long time, Sally. 
Uh, yes, I hope it rains enough to do some good. Let's get busy, Tonto. The Lone Ranger's hope was not in vain. The rain continued to fall heavily for the next three days. The morning of the third day, Tonto returned from a trip to the town. We bring back the handbill from town, King Sabi. Here. I look them over. Hmm. One on the outlaw, Tex Logan. Last we heard of him, he was up near El Paso. Hmm, that's right. Tonto, the rain's letting up. We'll ride up the river trail first and search for that escaped prisoner. Then we'll go back to that farm near Milton and have a talk with Sally's father. Hmm, that good idea, Gonsabi. We'll leave right now. Perhaps by noon the rain will have stopped. All right, let's get the horses. Later, as the two men rode up the Rio Grande Trail, the rain stopped falling. The Lone Ranger was saying, Tonto, though the rain stopped, I've noticed something. Hmm, what that? The water in the Rio Grande seems to be rising steadily. I don't like it. It's still far down from the bank. Yes, I know, but I remember a few years ago, after a prolonged rain, when the river fed by the streams from the mountainous regions to the north reached flood proportions. Hmm, we remember. The terrain around Eagle Pass and on down from there is fairly flat. If the waters do rise enough to overflow the bank of the river, many lives will be in danger. Oh, Silver! Whoa! Oh, Scout! Tonto, I don't think the people there will realize the danger. Hmm, what we do? We'll go back and warn them before it's too late. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Scout. It was dusk when the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode along a back street and stopped at the sheriff's office in Eagle Pass. The masked man identified himself to the sheriff, then convinced them it was danger of a flood. The sheriff, with a worried expression on his face, asked, Great day, mister. What do we do? What do you suggest? I suggest the women and children be sent to higher ground in all available wagons. Then the men must build a dike of sandbags along the riverbank bordering the town. Above and below the town, the canyon walls are high enough to retain the flood water. Good idea. The riverbank is low only where it borders the town. A sandbag dike should keep us from being flooded out. And someone should be sent to warn the people of Laredo. I'll send a deputy to warn him. Let's go talk to the folks down by the river. Right. Most of the citizens of the town were lying along the riverbank, watching the turbulent waters. Hey, look! Sweet sheriff with a masked man and engine. Now listen, everybody. These are friends. Friends. You can take my word for that. They came here to warn us of danger. What danger? I'll let the masked man tell you that. Listen to what he has to say. Men! Men, there's no time to lose. The water will rise much higher. There's danger of a flood here in Eagle Pass, and south of here, too. The rain stopped, mister. The water will be going down before long. No, you're wrong. The water will drain from the hills. The flood crest will come later. I'm sure of it. We must take the women and children to high ground and build a levee of sandbags. We must act now, or it will be too late. Hey, look! Look up the river! Big wave moving down this way! The first flood crest. And it'll be followed by a bigger one. Hurry! Get the women and children out of town! Eagle Rock may soon be underwater! sandbags for a levee. A line of wagons left the town and headed toward the hill. The men who stayed behind worked frantically to build a retaining wall of sandbags along the low section of the riverbank. 
before the expected large flood of crest arrived. A full moon shone brightly on the hard working men as they tore into the night. Mexican the small settlement of Pietro Negra streamed across the wooden bridge to the Mexican side of the river by wagon and burro. Toward morning, the Lone Ranger spoke to the sheriff. Sheriff, the bridge better be closed to prevent loss of life. The water's washing over it. It may go out. Yeah, I reckon you're right. I think most everybody who wanted to cross has come over. I'll notify the bridge guards. A short time later, one of the townspeople pointed to the bridge and shouted excitedly. Hey, look! The bridge is shaking like it's going to give way! And there's an old Mexican trying to walk across! He won't make it! No, oh, he's clinging to the bridge rail! He'll go down with the bridge! That man needs help! Well, nobody can reach him, mister! That bridge is about to go out! I'll try to get to him! Oh, wait! You can't make it! Easy! Steady, big fella! Come on, Silva! Urging the great boy Silver forward, the masked man quickly reached the shaky bridge. Easy, Silver. Easy, boy. The men along the riverbank watched tensely as the Lone Ranger rode toward the center of the bridge, where the old Mexican, panic-stricken, clung to the bridge railing. Hang on. I'll help you. Come on, Silver. A few minutes later, he reached the old man's side. Oh, Silver! Whoa! I'll help you climb up behind me! Now hurry! Oh, gracias, senor, but it's no use! Give me your hand! Don't give up! Here! The bridge! Soon it go! We'll try to get ashore before it does! Hang on tightly! Come on, Silver! Oh. Wow. Easy! Easy, big fellow! We can make it! Risking certain death, the Lone Ranger guided the great stallion carefully back toward Eagle Pass. The crowd watched spellbound as rumble after rumble told of the imminent destruction of the wooden structure. Then, just as Silver reached the end of the bridge... Look out! There it goes! <gasps> oh, Silver! Whoa! I'll help you down! There! Easy, steady, big fella. Mucho gracias, senor. You saved my life. Bob Thunder, I never thought you'd make it. If you'd been a minute late. Hey, look! Over there! Great day, look! A wall of water coming down the river. The flood crest. I hope and pray that levee holds. Keep back, everybody. Sandbags held as the flood crest passed, leaving the water level higher than ever. All that day, the men worked, stopping leaks and strengthening the levee with more sandbags. The following morning, the waters were receding slowly when one of the men who had gone to take the women and children to safety rose to find the sheriff. Oh! Oh there, whoa. Uh, Sheriff, an epidemic of fever's broken out in the big temporary camp we made in the hills. What? We gotta find a doctor. Only doctor I know of is in Laredo, and they're likely having trouble of their own. Anyway, we couldn't get through to them there. What do you think we ought to do, mister? We'll do, go and do what we can for them, Sheriff. Of course, without proper medication, the situation may become desperate. Where's the camp located? About a mile from Milton, back in the foothills. Let's go, Chalcho. Mm, you savvy. I'll go with you. Easy. Steady, big fella. Later, as the three men passed the doctor's farm, on the way to the camp near Milton. Easy, Silver, easy. Yes? 
There, where we see a little girl with dog the other day, her playing doctor. Oh, yeah, she had a doctor's kit. Where did and... she get a doctor's kit? Well, she said it belonged to her father, a farmer. I didn't question her further, but I... Tonto, you and the sheriff ride on. I'll join you later. I'm going to stop at that farmhouse. I may bring a doctor back with me. Get him Come up, on, Scout. Silver. Get him up, Scout. Giddy up there. A short time later, the Lone Ranger knocked on the door of the farmhouse. A masked man? What? Please forget the mask. I've come to talk to you. A matter of life and death. Well, come in. Thank you. Who is it, Frank? I, a masked man! Don't be frightened. Why have you come here? To talk to you, Dr. Rockford. Doctor, he, he called you. Let me handle this, Mary. Mr. I don't know who you are, but my name is Franklin, and I'm a farmer. I saw your little girl playing with a doctor's bag a few days ago. The name Dr. Rockford was in it. I don't know where she'd get such a thing. Well, she said it was yours. Also, I read a handbill about a Dr. Rockford. Frank Rockford of Kansas City. Middle-aged, clean-shaven. Of course, it would be easy to grow that beard as a disguise. I don't know anything about Dr. Rockford. My name is Frankford. Oh? Well, I'm sorry to hear it. You've heard about the flood, of course, and about the people camped in the hills near the town? Yes, yes. We saw the wagons passing and heard the awful news. Well, an epidemic has broken out of their camp. Many may die unless they have a doctor's help. I was hoping you are Dr. Rockford. I, I know all doctors take an oath to save lives. The situation is desperate. Frank, I... Oh, Frank, you must help them. You must. Then you are Dr. Rockford. Yes. Yes, I am. I, I left Kansas City because I was, I was charged with a murder I didn't commit. A patient, a woman, died after an operation. Her husband threatened to kill me. He was found dead on the trail, ambushed, and a gun belonging to me was found nearby. Someone took it from my office. I didn't do it. I left town to avoid arrest. I understand. Will you come to the camp with me, doctor? They need you very much. Yes. Yes, I'll go. And later I'll give myself up to the authorities. I'll get my medical kit and we'll leave at once. The Lone Ranger and the doctor rode hurriedly to the temporary camp. Howdy, mister. I've been waiting for you. Sheriff, I brought a doctor. Well, thank heaven. Glad to see you, doc. Hello, Sheriff. I'll get right to work. If there's anything I can do. I have a small amount of medicine to combat the fever, but I'll need much more. Doctor, I suggest you write down the name of the medicine you want. Then have the sheriff go into Milton and telegraph San Antonio for a supply. It can be sent by special courier. We must get it here as soon as possible. Just write down what you want, Doc. I'll get it off by telegraph within half an hour. The doctor's limited supply barely lasted until the medicine arrived from San Antonio. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, under the doctor's directions, helped to give the medication to the stricken people and to relieve the suffering. For three days and nights, they worked unceasingly with very little rest. Finally, the doctor spoke encouragingly. Mister, I think I can safely say the situation is well in hand now. Oh, good. You've done a wonderful job, doctor. Oh. Here comes the sheriff. I think it's about time he learned the truth about me. Whoa, whoa there, whoa. Stay there. Well, doctor, thanks to you, things seem to be coming along fine. The folks sure are beholden to you and the masked man. Thanks, sheriff. There's uh, something you ought to know. Oh, uh, I've got some news for you, doc. News? For me? Uh-huh. The masked man believed in you, so I went into Milton last night and sent a telegram. Just got the answer. Here it is. Listen, Sheriff Fields, care of Milton office, Dr. Rockford, no longer wanted by the law. What? Real murderer apprehended, signed Marshall Billings, Kansas City. I'm no longer a fugitive from justice? Nope, you're free to go on your way, Doc. I, I don't know what to say. Why, now we'll give up the farm and, and I'll practice again. I'm very happy for you, Doctor. 
I think the people of Eagle Pass would like to have you settle here. They sure would. How about it, Doc? I'd like that. This is wonderful country. Tonto and I will leave now to trail an escaped prisoner. Sheriff, I'm sure you'll have plenty of willing hands to take care of things in Eagle Pass. Yep, thanks to you. Water didn't do too much damage. Soon as possible, we'll move these folks back to their homes. Oh, good. Tonto's waiting over there with our horses. We'll meet again, Doctor. Adios. Goodbye, mister. Goodbye. Easy, big fella. Come on, Silver. Come on, go. Sheriff, I've met many men in my life, but he's the finest and most understanding I've ever met. Who is he? I thought you knew by this time, Doc. He's an hombre who always puts his country and other people first, regardless of the risks. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. Hi, oh, Silver! Away! Tonight's performance of The Lone Ranger was produced and directed by Chris Clark, featuring Craig Howard as The Lone Ranger, Russ Gannon as Frank Rockford, Kathy Kerwer as Sally and Mary Rockford, Michael Franco as the Sheriff, and me, George Fennell, as Tonto and your announcer. Our sound effects were operated by Laura Sweet and Ted Clark, and members of our audience. This is the Altera Broadcasting System. to New York with you. You know, Bucky Harris, the Yankee manager, give me a job as a coach for as long as you're on the team. Well, look, Abbott, if you're coach, you must know all the players. I certainly do. Well, you know, I've never met the guys, so you'll have to tell me their names, and then I'll know who's playing on the team. Oh, I'll tell you their names. But you know, it seems to me they give these ball players nowadays peculiar names. You mean funny names? Yeah, strange names, pet names like Dizzy Dean. His brother Daffy. <laughs> and their French cousin. French? Yeah. Oh, that Gouffé. Gouffé, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gouffé Dean. Well, well, let's see. We have on the bags who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I say who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. You're going to be coach too? Yes. And you don't know the fella's name? Well, I should. Well, then who's on first? Yes. I mean the fella's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who? The guy playing. Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name. Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who? Yes. <laughs> Look, you got a first baseman. But certainly. Who's playing first? That's right. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. All I'm trying to find out is the fella's name on first. Who? The guy that gets... That's the, it. Who gets the money? He does. Every dollar. Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yes. What's wrong with that? Look, all I want to know is when you sign up the first baseman, uh, how does he sign his name? Who? The guy. Who? How does he sign? That's how he signs it. Who? Yes. All I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? No, what's on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? One base at a time! Well, don't change the players around. I'm not changing nobody. Take it easy, buddy. I'm only asking you who's the guy on first That's base. That's right. Okay. All right. What's the guy's name on first base? No, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Who's on third? He's on third, I mean. Well, we're not talking about him. You get me all mixed up. How did I get on third base? You mentioned his name. If I mention the third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who's playing first? What's on first? What's on second? I don't know. He's on third. There I go, back on third again. <laughs> Would you just stay on third base and don't go off it? All right, what do you want to know? Now, 
Who's playing third base? Why do you insist on putting who on third base? What am I putting on third? No, what is on second? You don't know who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. Look, you got an outfield. Sure we have. The left fielder's name? Why? I just thought I'd ask you. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. And I'll tell you when I finally get the base turn. <laughs> then tell me, who's playing left field? Who's playing first? I'm not, stay out of the infield. I want to know what's the guy's name in the left field. Oh, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. The left fielder's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's the center fielder. Look, you got a pitcher on this team? Sure. The pitcher's name? Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? I'm telling you now. Then go ahead. The guy's name is tomorrow. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me who's pitching? Now listen, who is not pitching? I'll break your arm, you say, who's on first. I want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. Got a catcher? Certainly. The catcher's name? Today. Today and tomorrow's pitching. Now you got it. All we got is a couple of days on the team. You know, I'm a catcher too. So they tell me. I get behind the plate to do some fancy catching. Tomorrow's pitching on my team, and a heavy hitter gets up. Now, the heavy hitter bunts the ball. When he bunts the ball, me, being a good catcher, I'm going to throw the ball out at first base. Throw the guy out at first. So I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. That's all you have to do. Is to throw the ball to first base. Yes. Now, who's got it? Naturally. Look, if I throw the ball to first base, uh -huh. somebody's got to get it. Now, who has it? Naturally. Who? Naturally. Naturally? Naturally. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. No, you don't. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. That's different. That's what I said. You're not saying it. I throw the ball to naturally. You throw it to who? Naturally. That's it. That's what I said. You ask me. I throw the ball to who? Naturally. Now you ask me. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. That's it. Same as you. Same as you. I throw the ball to who? Whoever it is drops the ball and the guy runs to second. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws it to I don't know. I don't know throws it back to tomorrow, a triple play. Another guy gets up and hits a long fly ball to because. Why? I don't know. He's on third and I don't give a darn. What? I said, I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our short stuff. <laughs>